Madam uh, Speaker, before I start, I want to I want to thank the member for Fort Charlotte and the member for South Beach, um, who has answered our call with the portholes in the Kalani constituency, and I must say that they have patched all the various holes that we were able to identify and send to them. And they've, um, I'm very pleased, and I want to say that the Kalani constituency is very pleased. We still have the challenge with the littering, and um, it's expensive for us all government to clean with great regularity. And therefore, I would um, be seeking assistance from the member where they can put um, signs along a lot of the bridges saying no littering, fine, so and so. At least use that as some form of deterrent. It may not necessarily work, but some people will respond. Madam Speaker, it is my pleasure again to rise on behalf of the good people of the Kalani constituency who sent me here to be their voice. I have, to, I have to keep speaking up for them as they, along with many other Bahamians, are being punished by this administration because they voted, because they voted for FNL. As I have said in this house before, Madam Speaker, the Bahamian people are not getting the proper attention they deserve from this New Day administration. But be assured that I will continue to be a fearless voice for the Kalani constituency. It is for them that I press for a better governance for our country. We are debating the Public Finance Management Bill 2023 and the Procurement Bill. Madam Speaker, we had undergone extensive consultation by numerous entities, chamber, biker, lawyers, etc., and we had gotten agreement with respect to the outcome. We were set to debate the Central Bank of the Bahamas Amendment Bill 2023, but at the last minute, this was pulled. But I think you can imagine that I prepared all informed that we were debating certain bills, prepared only to receive a communication at exactly 7.35 a.m. yesterday morning that we will not be debating those. This is what we will be debating. It don't give a man proper time to prepare. But so be it. But at last minute, Mr. Sp <laughs> Madam Speaker, at the last minute, we were to debate the Central Bank of Bahamas Amendment Bill 2003, 23, but last minute this was pulled. The Fiscal Responsibility Act, and I want to read a part of it. The Fiscal Responsibility Act, and I quote, pulling from an article in the Tribune, August 2nd, 2019, and this is important. The Fiscal Responsibility Act establishes deficit and debt targets and safeguards to limit government borrowing. So, Madam Speaker, I don't know, it would appear that the members don't want to be limited by this act. The act, the report, is buried or brought at the same time as the budget, which means there would not be adequate debate on the report as opposed to another time. So I don't know whether it's premeditated. And why I use that word, I look at the Tribune, August 2nd, 2019, and I will table it. The article read, the headline, PLP won't commit the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And I will table this. So I wonder whether it's premeditated, Madam Speaker. They said they won't commit to it. Opposition statements, by my colleagues, the leader of the opposition and member of East Grand Bahama outlined how the PLP made use of $232 million in IMF special drawing rights held by the central bank. The opposition pointed out that the administration's behavior 
was not supported by law. And this type of behavior by the New Day administration no longer surprises most Bahamians. Since coming to office, we had a case in which the Minister of Transport was being investigated by police for months for allegedly hitting a police officer with a car. Ultimately, months later, police said there was not enough evidence to proceed. This is the same minister, Madam Speaker, who has been giving out taxi plates like it's Christmas. She seems to think that these plates belong to her and the PLP, and that they can do whatever they want with public property. Despite numerous questions posed by me and other members of the opposition, we still have not gotten a clear and full answer from the Minister of Transport as to how many taxi plates she has issued since taking office. We have asked if the issuance of the plates were gazetted as required by law. We have also been unable to get a clear and full answer as to the number of plates issued. But if it was gazetted, the law requires you to know that information. And that's why the member don't know. However, I can say, Madam Speaker, that when just pre-election, the number of plates was 1,135. My last count was 1,805, which meant that the member has issued 700 plates. Last count, are you? Looking at the plate numbers. Seven, 700. The chair recognizes the honorable member for West Grand Bahama. The member is speculating that looking at the plate numbers, he's able to arrive at an increase of about 700 or so. I think the member would wish to not uh, refrain from going in that area and allow for the numbers we put on the table. The member uh, of Elizabeth has uh, committed to, upon completion of the work being done, to ensure that the numbers are made available to all. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would have been in consultation with the taxi drivers as to the sequence, and there's approximately 700 plates that was issued. And the member, if she had followed the law, she could have answered that very easily. Madam Speaker, I want to refer to the quote by the member for St. Michael, for Carmichael, in the Tribune 19th of 1st, 2023. I quote, the Bahamas is a country covered by the rule of law. Obviously, the member for Elizabeth is unaware. So much for accountability and transparency. The New Day administration, Madam Speaker, is a do-as-you-like government. They think rules are discretionary and do not apply to them. When it comes to them, the New Day administration does as it pleases because they are a very, very entitled bunch. There are certain rules for Bahamians and a different way are proceeding for PLPs, especially those in the high command. When it's time for working Bahamians to pay more taxes, they want all the rules followed right away. This is the government of tax, spend, and waste that is spending huge sums, of, sums on consultants and travel while many Bahamians are suffering from high costs made worse by PLP policies. The PLP are desperate to get money from the Bahamian people, and they want it now. Madam Speaker, under the Income Administration, Nico Grant, as Minister of Work, embarked on what we call an infrastructural crusade. The Minister Administration continued with the infrastructural crusade. The Davis Administration abandoned the infrastructural crusade and went on a tax crusade. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in an editorial on March 2nd, 2023, the Tribune noted, when Prime Minister Philip Davis gave his media budget communication last week, it seems something did not add up. He told the House that the government experienced a net deficit of $285.7 million. That's $7.8 million more than the previous year. The press duly reported this rise in deficit, ourselves included. And yesterday, Mr. Davis start, started out on, an, on the, defense, the offensive blaming the press. However, 
when East Grand Bahama MP Crazy Thompson pointed out that Mr. Davis's actual speech last week contained the figures that the press reported, he found a new target, his speechwriters. He said, that was a misspeak by the writers. That's why I made a point to correct it. What I said today is correct. It went on. I don't speak. I'm just getting over cold. It went on. If that was the case, then why did he not say so in the first place? And why did it take the intervention of Mr. Thompson to nudge him to where he apparently wanted to be to make a point to correct it? Is it really so hard to get up and tell the House that you misspoke and that you wanted to correct, to correct the record? If Mr. Thompson had not intervened, would Mr. Davis have left it as an attack on the media for accurately reporting his words? It went on. The difficulty with this is, of course, that we have already seen this administration show great reluctance for being forthcoming with the saga over whether or not Minister of Works, Alfred Says, saw the proposal on fuel hedging at BPL. It further went in December. Mr. Says finally admitted that he had been briefed on fuel hedging, but it took a long while for him to get there. The email was sent to him in October, but by his own admission, it was several weeks before he took some time while he was in New York to go through his emails and find that he had indeed received a briefing he denied in the House. The editorial continued, ultimately, it is the Minister of Finance's words and his speech. The speechwriter doesn't carry the blame if the House is misled in any fashion. The person giving the speech does. Mr. Davis should have just accepted the error on his part and and this from the start, and would like, likely have looked better for doing so. Shifting the blame to others is never a good look when we all saw him say the words himself. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, it is expected that members should present facts and accurate information when they come to Parliament. This is especially expected of ministers. The Prime Minister is Minister of Finance. We are here debating financial bills. In the mid-year budget process, he presented inaccurate information to this House related to whether the deficit increased. The Nassau Garden reported that the Minister of Finance said, the Minister of Finance, who is the Prime Minister, criticized the newspaper for reporting what he said, suggesting the information was in incorrect. Our side pointed out that the newspaper just reported what he said. The Prime Minister had to correct himself, saying the deficit actually decreased. The Prime Minister was publicly embarrassed. He was forced to apologize to the newspaper. What is scarier is that the Minister of Finance did not know if the deficit was up or down. He was out of the loop about such a critical and important matter. Imagine, Madam Speaker, if he had said this in an international setting on the world stage during one of his many, many trips. He would have absolutely, he would have absolutely embarrassed himself and the Bahamas. Let us not forget how he seemed out of touch, out of the loop on the BPL hedge. The Ministry of Finance really is too big for him. Madam Speaker, he blamed one of his writers for the error about the deficit number. I do not remember any prime minister throwing his staff under the bus so publicly like this prime minister ever. Nothing, it has never happened. But Madam Speaker, I go back to July 29th, 2014. And I will table this. The headline, Cash Accuses DPM Davis of Throwing Prime Minister Christie Under the Bus. The, min the now Prime Minister threw his Prime Minister under the bus in 2014, July 29th. November 22nd, 2022, 
The headline, PM denies statement says made in house of BPL fuel hedge issue. He threw his minister under the bus. Then again in 2022, he threw the financial secretary and the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance staff under the bus when he said he did not see certain things, but someone made the decision. And now he's throwing his writer under the bus. Madam Speaker, this clearly demonstrates that the Prime Minister has a history of throwing individuals under the bus. It's only a matter of time before y'all get thrown under the bus. His staff, his staff writers, are owed an apology, and they should be prepared to be thrown under the bus again when it is convenient for the Prime Minister to do so again. History is there, 2014 straight up. The issue is not the writer, it's the Minister of Finance. The Minister of Finance does not know his brief. He's too busy traveling. He's not familiar with the numbers. He reads speeches with information he apparently does not understand. You know, as Minister of Finance, I used to sit down with the FS and go through every word of that speech, especially languages that are not familiar to me. That's what leaders do. What else is the Prime Minister getting wrong? What else is he absolutely confused about? What else doesn't he know? If the Minister of Finance were familiar with the figures, if a mistake were made, he would have been able to see it and correct it immediately. This issue raises serious questions about the Prime Minister and his role as Minister of Finance. It raises serious questions about the credibility of what he says publicly and in this House. Instead of initially accepting responsibility, he blamed his speechwriter and he blamed the newspaper. This seems to be a pattern, duck responsibility and blame someone else. Big people, are, big people and leaders accept responsibility. If he could get this figure wrong and come in here and read it out to the House of Assembly, what other numbers has he gotten wrong that may have slipped by? When he comes in here quoting numbers, saying that everything is great in the country, what should we make of that? Could this information be incorrect too? It has been clear for some time that the Minister of Finance, is, that the Ministry of Finance is too much for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister himself stated in this house that the Ministry of Finance is a big ministry as an excuse as to why he had not read certain documents. The work is too complex for him. He's often missing from his desk away on luxury trips with his traveling companions. He is not focused on the work. He does not seem interested in the work. <laughs> the chair recognizes the honorable member for West Graham. Traveling with his companions. Buddies, buddies, buddies. Let's, Please, let's change make it. sure we change the word. <laughs> mm. I change the word. I yield. I change the word. Buddies. He's not focused on the work. He does not seem interested in the work. The Prime Minister should fire. And listen to me. After what's going on, the Prime Minister should fire his Minister of Finance for lack of basic understanding of the Ministry of Finance. He should get someone else in there who understands the numbers and difficult issues. The member for Exuma has the qualifications. He has made plenty, plenty money in the financial service sector. You know, he once wanted to become an FNM, but he ended up over there. He was almost one of our candidates. The Prime Minister should choose the member for Exuma, member for Angliston, member for Fort Charlotte, member for East, for West Grand Bahama, or even the member for Bain Town for the role as Minister of Finance. However, I know he won't do that. The financial reforms we are debating today will only be properly led if there is someone more involved in the Ministry of Finance. This Prime Minister has demonstrated over and over again that he's not the man 
who should be leading our financial ministry. We are experiencing unprecedented delays and problems in inland revenue, including a backlog of Bahamians getting various compliance certificates and business licenses late. The country deserves a more capable, serious, and hands-on finance minister. And unfortunately, there seems to be someone else who is large and in charge. Who is really in charge of finance? It does not appear to be the prime minister. People have, people have, Bahamians have concerns about giving this administration more power over their money and the public finances as these two bills will do. Trust is at the heart of good governance. Political parties and leaders set out their agendas during election campaigns. They say what they are going to do and set the tune for how they would govern if elected. And this New Day administration made many promises while campaigning. In their blueprint for change, they promised action on immigration, crime, a revolution in education, a master plan for each island, and many other lofty initiatives. Since, coming, since winning the last election, these plans seem to have fallen by the wayside. There's been a crime crisis in New Providence throughout their term. Illegal immigration appears to be at record levels. There's been no revolution in education. Where are the master plans to develop each island? What has emerged as the governing ideology of this PLP under the Prime Minister is tax the people and give the PLPs. From the Brave Davis basket tax, the BPL increase, to the impending NIB increase, to trying to get money from people doing short-term vacation rentals, to possibly adding VAT to health insurance claims, this PLP <clears throat> is all about getting more of the people's money. The people might understand if they saw their money going towards initiatives that benefit them, but they don't. All they see is the money going to the PLPs. PLP consultants, PLP business people, PLP contractors are all over town boasting about how good things are. Before this election, some of them were living in their mummy's home, Madam Speaker. Now they are moving into gated communities. The New Day administration has been so good to them that they have parked their old cars and are walking into dealerships for brand new luxury vehicles. Few solid ideas are coming from the New Day administration. Not enough real in the ground investments are happening. Madam Speaker, like the PLP's old playbook, they are making big announcements about all kinds of investments, a few of which will, will ever materialize. All the PLP knows how to do is tax, 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 and more tax. When the COVID-19 pandemic shifted phases, the economy opened up again. This growth began on the FNM's watch, despite the Minister of Finance repeatedly and incorrectly claiming that the country was in recession when they were elected. His false claim has been debunked and discredited over and over again. As The Guardian noted in a January 25th editorial, I quote, it remains incredulous that Prime Minister Philip Davis continues to maintain that he met the Bahamian economy in severe recession when he came to office September 21. Davis made the claim in his national address last October and repeatedly in the House of Assembly since election. He most recently repeated it at the Bahamas Business Outlook last week. This claim is outlandish. It is false. No amount of repeating it will make it a fact. In fact, the economy grew by 14% in, in 2021, during which his administration was in office for only the last three months of that year. In the months prior to September 21, 
The central bank documented a recovery, the recovering behemoth economy. And in the report for that September, it noted, tourism output further strengthened, containing a more pronounced rebuilding of seasonal business as the year progressed, attributed to improved vaccination efforts, both locally and internationally. The out of touch, out of loop, Minister of Finance should apologize to the House for repeated misstatement and factual error. Does he intend to blame his writers for this also? Or will he blame a newspaper? We know it is unlikely that he will take responsibility for repeatedly misleading the country on this matter. Madam Speaker, the FNM also left some good projects in place that are now opening. But we know from his mistakes about the deficit numbers on BPL that he often makes bold, false claims. Despite the economy improving, which began under the FNM, PLP taxes and cost of living increases are preventing many behemoths from fully feeling the better times. Every time behemoths feel as if they may be making a little more and able to save a little more, the government creates a new tax or cost of living increase to take away those gains. I went to the supermarket the other day, Madam Speaker, and I spent $178, and I walked out with a little bag, $178. Many people, no caviar, no caviar. That was corned beef and different things. Corned beef and, and sardine, grits. You know, I like, my corn, I like my sardine and grits. But Madam Speaker, the point is, the point is, many people are hurting. People are ignoring the purchase of foods because they can no longer afford food. Many people are going to bed hungry. Many behemoths now fully realize that they were sold false dreams by the PLP at the last election. The new day was only a promise of a better day for PLPs. The Bahamian people no longer trust this New Day administration to act in their best interest. The Minister of Health made a statement that the hospital is filled because of the increase in chronic non-communicable diseases. Not COVID, chronic non-communicable diseases. And you know why that's so? Because food price, because you are placed and tax on prescription drugs. Individuals cannot afford to purchase their medication. Instead, they use the extra resources, the extra cash, to purchase food. And as a result of that, their non-communicable diseases go out of control, and they present themselves at the hospital, which will cost us even more. If you had not placed the tax there, the, the situation in the hospital that we see today would not be as bad. The PLP has shown who it is quickly in a year and a half. And this philosophy, Madam Speaker, tax the people and spend on PLPs. Madam Speaker, the people cannot take any more tax. We ask for accountability. We want to know exactly how the monies are spent and how much are spent. Madam Speaker, I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. The chair recognizes the Honorable Member for West Grand Bahama. Before Kalani takes a seat, maybe he'd wish to explain further uh, your uh, suggestion that the hospital's filled uh, <clears throat> because of the medication, the lack thereof. Is that what you're suggesting? Thank you, Honorable Member. A lot of individuals, first and foremost, you go to, the, you know, I, I, I try not to get into health too much. But there are situations where the hospital may, there may be long line for medication. Individuals may not necessarily wait the line, and they subsequently leave. As a result, that they do not take their medication. Medication for pressure, medication for diabetes, etc. Not only that, taxes have been introduced on these medications. Individuals now must make a choice, medication versus food. 
They spend on food. They don't spend on medication. Because they did not take their medication meant that their pressure goes out of control. They get heart attack, they get strokes, they get kidney failure. The diabetes go out of control. They have the same problems again. And other illnesses go out of, out of, out of control. As a result of the complications of the illnesses, they present the hospital with the complication, thus utilizing the bad strokes, heart attacks, and different, different things like that.